thanks very much. Uh, yes, Chris, the Centre for Research in Strategic Purchasing and Supply, uh, is part of the School of Management at the University of Bath. And uh, I'm also flagging up here that one of my other roles is President of the Healthcare Supply Association. And the reason for flagging that up is because it's evidence of our core approach, and I believe the core approach of the University of Bath, in that we are very much integrated with practice and our research is very applied. And the Healthcare Supply Association brings together all of the senior public procurement practitioners across the NHS with the industry to be able to get them to work together to be able to solve live problems. So it's very much core to our approach. And our approach is aimed at really addressing the key issues that we currently face. And the first key issue you will see all over the media this week, public spending and cuts in public spending. As Ron mentioned, we await the comprehensive spending review findings. We also have a review being reported this week recommending the centralisation of procurement. So once again, the pendulum is swinging in terms of structure. And we just see across the board recommendations of cuts. So public spending is a major issue. And for us, this is a procurement issue because any spending is with a market and we have to learn how to understand and to manage what we do in those markets in a much more strategic and policy-driven way. And we fundamentally believe that university research should help change business and society, that it should be applied and it shouldn't apologise for that, as well as being academically rigorous. And it's this double hurdle research that underpins what we do. We also have a firm belief at the University of Bath that we need to evidence outcomes of research. It isn't sufficient for us to deliver research. We have to provide the evidence of the outcomes and the impact of our research. And that's fundamental to any project before we actually embark on it. What I want to just showcase here briefly, uh, some of the work that's been involved over 15 years of this centre that is integrated with practice. And I'm just drawing out three themes that just demonstrate the evidence of that. And I'll be on the stand for the rest of the day and happy to discuss these and all of the other projects that we've been involved with. The first theme relates to improvements in healthcare. And we've been involved in a 15-year partnership on research, education and change programmes with NHS procurement. Now, NHS procurement over those 15 years, as you would imagine, has changed. Uh, Organisations come and they go, and for whatever reason, we've been able to sustain an ongoing partnership across that spans those changes. And that partnership has involved educating uh, senior practitioners in public procurement and educating them on the outputs and the outcomes of our research. So it's research-led education and research-led change that we've been involved with. And these outcomes of the research that we've done jointly with the NHS have changed policy. And one example, there are many examples that we've been involved with, is relating to, um, we were involved in helping to set up a network in prosthetics, which was the Prosthetic Strategic Supply Group, which is still in existence 13 years later. It's self-running, self-governing independently of us now. And uh, that by bringing together the industry who design prostheses with clinicians, with patients and carer representative groups, and with procurement practitioners, then we had to help them to learn how to make strategy in these, net in, in these networks and how to influence government policy. And as a result of this, a joint letter was submitted from this network and it changed the way that funding occurred relating to rehabilitation and it did change patients' lives. 
These outcomes of the research, we also have evidence of how spending has been reduced. And there is a history that can be looked at of 15 years which can support the proposed current changes. And one example of this uh, relates to audiology. And by delaying and gathering together all of the spending power of the NHS in audiology, then the NHS was able to change the market for hearing aids to be able to make digital hearing aids affordable on the NHS, when previously the only way that patients could receive these were through the private sector at a, a very large investment. And these outcomes have improved patients' lives as a result. And what we're interested in is how we can causally link the outcomes and the impact of our research to show quality of life benefits. A second theme um, of our research, a uh, very strong theme, is that of innovation. And we were part of the Healthcare Industries Task Force, which was set up really because of a response that was a concern of government and of the industry that we were slow in the uptake of innovations from industry. And so we're involved in helping to establish new networks of uh, NHS procurement practitioners with clinicians, with industry, and with research to be able to come together to really understand how we could get the uptake of innovation into the NHS more easily. And at the time, uh, NICE was certainly evaluating new innovations that were at a national level and quite profound innovations, but there was a whole swathe of good ideas and good products and good services coming through, particularly from small to medium-sized enterprises, that faced a, a quite large bureaucracy and a very long time delay that they just could not then penetrate into the NHS. So we were involved in helping to form, through these networks, a, a quick evaluation process to engage those small to medium-sized enterprises and to get their ideas in uh, much more quickly. And these ideas involved uh, earlier diagnosis and also more patient and home-centered care. So for example, blood glucose monitoring of diabetics, which didn't involve them having to go into hospitals and also enabled them, the patients to spot quicker when a problem was going to occur were, parts, were some of the examples of the products that came out of this shared research. And overall, we're interested in how these can all be steered by desired outcomes, particularly with the new proposed outcomes framework that we need to be able to work out how to align across the NHS the commissioning of goods and services to be able to demonstrate the delivery of outcomes. So that's a, a second theme, and a third theme to showcase uh, in the event today is international research and what we can learn, particularly in public sector. Public sector, not just in the UK, but internationally, does tend to be quite country-focused. You don't get out very much, and there's an awful lot going on in other countries that you can learn from. And we started in 2003 an international research study to find out what was going on in other countries in public procurement. And we have 17 nations actively researching public procurement and the practitioners and the academics of these nations coming together to share and to learn from that. Transferring knowledge, we have senior public procurement practitioners and academics exchanged across those nations so that we can engage in the practice uh, and we are changing public procurement. We are surprised at where we learn the messages and the benefits from. We have a real example of tangible benefits that came through to the Welsh economy that was learnt from South Africa. And the image here of the South African flag <coughs> and the poster next to it is the black economic empowerment policy that was in place in South Africa which was using public procurement in a much more strategic and policy-driven way to empower the blacks in the society. And the Welsh economy and the spend, people responsible for spending the money in the Welsh economy learnt from this and were able to use the same processes to be able to change the way of engaging and putting more money into small to medium-sized enterprises in the Welsh economy. And that was the direct result of the senior practitioner being involved in our research. 
So overall, the key learning points that we have from this work. First, the impacts of long-term partnership between government, industry, and academia. Unfortunately, we still do have short-term funding of research. There are examples of longer term, but we still do have short-term relationships that can bring some benefits, but there are so many more benefits the more that we learn from each other and about each other. Secondly, it isn't just about research, but it's about the integration of research, education, and change programs that really bring these research ideas into delivering and sustaining impact in business and society. And this is a very difficult challenge that we have to face. And our third learning point is the value of international learning. We should get out more. Uh, we don't necessarily physically have to do this. We can network. And the ideas exchange in our international research network is constant, of people asking questions of other nations very easily through the knowledge network that we now have. And what underpins all of this is our belief in double hurdle academic research, the double hurdle that academic research should have impact and it should change business, society, economy. Thank you.